Nakikita ba yung nakikita ko? <laughs> WBC Pathology. Okay ba? Guys? Okay. Okay, sige. Let's start. So, dinivide ko itong topic na to into two major topics, non-malignant and malignant uh, leukocyte disorders. Sa non-malignant, ang pag-uusapan natin is all about numbers or quantitative disorder and function derangement or qualitative disorder. And then next part, yung mga malignant, ay mga cancerous disorder such as leukemias and lymphomas. Alam ko sa batch nyo, ako ang nagturo ng WBC Patho. So medyo parehas yung format ng, ng, ng PowerPoint, I guess. Pero may iba kong dinagdag, so make sure na ito yung makuha nyo handout, hindi yung, ano, yung last, last year. Last, last year pa yun. Anyway, so parang, baka magtaka kayo, parang sounds familiar. Eh, hindi natin pwedeng palitan yung mga knowledge kasi. And this handout is also based sa mga... Um, handout na ginagamit sa mga reviewers sa AX, Top Notch, sa mga yan. So, pwede nyo itong gamitin hanggang review sa boards. So, let's proceed. Okay. Unahin natin mga quantitative abnormalities. Okay. So, before we proceed with abnormalities in numbers, kailangan alam nyo din kung ano yung mga normal values. And again, we will go back to our favorite mnemonics, never let monkey eat banana. So, ano ibig sabihin? Neutrophils has, uh, are the most abundant WBC in the bloodstream. And yung basophil naman, ang least abundant pagdating sa PBS. Okay? And anything ng derangement na dyan will interpreted as a disorder. Halimbawa, may neutrophilia, ibig sabihin may bacterial infection, lymphocytosis, ibig sabihin may viral infection as well. Punta naman tayo sa mga terminologies about uh, WBC counts. So, pagdating sa differential, ang bibilangin, syempre yung lima, limang yon, neutrophil, lymphocytes, um, eosinophil, basophil, and monocytes plus your band cells. So, huwag kakalimutan ang bands kasama yan sa differential count. And then, tingnan natin yung mga absolute and agranulocytosis. Um, ang difference nitong dalawa, the absolute neutrophil count is just a count of your neutrophils plus your bands. So, mamaya ituturo ko ulit sa inyo paano mag Compute for absolute WBC counts. And then, a granulocytosis naman, ito yung absolute neutrophil count of less than 0.5. So, pakikorek na lang yung ating handout. No? Neutrophils plus bands dapat ito. And in absolute uh, format. No? Absolute count dapat. And then, we have another term called Leukoerythroblastic reaction and this um, reaction is brought about by large numbers of band cells. Yung bands natin is yung mga immature neutrophil plus nucleated RBCs plus teardrop RBCs. Kaya siya leukoerythroblastic. May combination of leukocyte and erythroblast um, production or accumulation. And itong reaction na to is most commonly seen in primary myelofibrosis. Uh, discuss din natin to later on. And the next term is leukemoid reaction. Leukemoid reaction is pa, uh, from the name itself, parang leukemia. Pero hindi talaga siya leukemia. Paano siya nagkaroon ng similarity with leukemia kasi ang counts niya is madalas mad madaming WBC up to levels of above 50 okay with uh, uh madaming blast cells or tinatawag natin left shift or shift to the left kapag di ba pag sinasabi natin shift to the left madaming mga blast 
So, pa parang kamukha siya ng leukemia. Pero, not really leukemia. So, kailan nangyayari itong um, leukemoid reaction? So, madalas dyan, wala ang aking pointer. Oh. Anyway, so madalas dyan ang ating mga bacterial infection such as TB Anyway, hindi <laughs> ko matype yung TB Anyway, lagay nyo na lang TB Okay, so madalas dyan ang tuberculosis And then next uh, for absolute uh, counting. So, paano natin yan um, kinocompute? So, halimbawa, magkocompute tayo ng absolute neutrophil count. And again, recall natin, kapag absolute neutrophil count, kailangan natin ng bands and the neutrophils. Okay? Huwag kakalimutan, no? Kasi kasama din ang bands pagdating sa mga differential count. So, huwag kakalimutan i-take note na yung uh, percentage of your band cells. So, halimbawa, practice lang tayo, no? Ang WBC count mo is 10, the neutrophil, 60%, bands is 5%. So, paano natin ko-compute ang absolute counts? So, first, i-convert mo muna tong percentages into decimal point, okay? into whole number. So, i-add mo muna, okay? Add mo muna yung neutrophil plus bands, and then, multiply mo na with the WBC count. So, makukuha mo dyan, 10 times 0.65, so 6.5 times 10 raised to the 9 per liter of blood. And then, hindi matatapos dyan. We have to um, interpret our results. So, ito ba ay example ng resulta ng agranulocytosis? Siyempre, no. Ano ulit ang cut-off ng agranulocytosis? 0.5 or below. Ito ba ay um, example ng leukemoid reaction? Siyempre, no din. Kasi ang, ang cut-off naman ng leukemoid reaction is above 50. So, hindi yun doon natatapos ang answer dapat. The next Leukemoid reaction versus CML. CML is chronic myelogenous leukemia. Then, again, no, sanabi ko nga, leukemoid from the term itself, mukha daw siyang leukemia. And ang pinakamalapit na type of leukemia na kamukha ng leukemoid reaction is your CML. Pero paano natin madi-differentiate itong dalawa? So, we have four criteria. No? Unang-una, uh, ano ang dumadami ba? Ano ba ang ano ba ang type of leukocyte ang predominant in each of this condition? Kapag leukemoid, ang mataas lang dyan is neutrophils and bad cells. Whereas in CML, lahat ng um, pati blast, no? pati mga mature cells, dumadami din in CML. Ano ulit ang cut-off natin dun sa CML? As compared to your AML, ano ang blast number? Diba kapag acute, more than 20%. Ang chronic, less than 20%. Okay, next criteria naman, ang mga platelet counts natin. Leukemoid reaction, normal ang platelet count. Sa CML, high ang platelet count. Okay, kasi one of the problem with CML, yung ating bone marrow. Okay, so, pati yung platelet count, madami din. Next naman, ano tong PH1 na to? PH1 is also known as your Philadelphia chromosome. So, saan meron lang may Philadelphia chromosome? Yung CML. Negative sa leukemoid reaction. And lastly, pakibilugan. No? Must know ito. The lab score between your CML and leukemoid is also different. Leukemoid reaction, ang lab score is high. Ang lab score naman sa CML, low. Okay, bakit kaya ito, ng, uh, bakit kaya ganito ang results nila? So, discuss natin yung lab. 
Okay, lab is also known as leukocyte alkaline phosphatase test. And this enzyme is commonly seen in neutrophils lang with normal growth. Okay, ano ibig sabihin ng normal growth? Ibig sabihin, hindi sila, um, tag dito, dumulundag ng differentiation, no? And sumusunod sa tamang cell cycle. Unlike sa mga leukemia and malignant cells, hindi na susunod yung cell cycle. So, mas makikita ngayon ang lab activity sa mga normal cells as compared sa cancer cells. Kaya, mas madami ang lab score or mas malaki ang lab score sa leukemoid as compared to your leukemia. Okay? And the staining technique used in lab scoring is what you call the Paplos method. Kaya, may makikita kayo na uh, instead of lab scoring ang term, Kaplos method ang nilalagay nila sa question. So, parehas lang itong dalawang ito. Okay? And ano ba ang normal range ng mga ng lab score para masabi natin kung increase or decrease? The normal score is 20 to 100. Less than 20 CML, more than 100 leukemoid reaction. So, paano ba ginagawa itong Kaplos method? So, meron tayong uh, grading system na yan. And objectively lang natin nilalagyan ng grade based dun sa criterion na to. Okay? Mas intense yung color of the cytoplasm or the granules, mas, mag, mas malaki yung number or the grade of the cell. So, anong, anong unang step na gagawin ng medtech in lab score? Mag, magbibilang yan ng 100 uh, WBC. Okay? And then, i-grade bawat isa according to their intensity of the color. So, halimbawa itong case na to, no? Um, nakapagbilang si medtech ng 100 WBC. And bawat WBC ginrate niya according to the intensity of the granule, granular color. Okay? And then, imumultiply niya yan. Halimbawa, 0 times 52. So, may 52 WBCs na may 0 grade. Okay? So, 0 yan. 1 plus 20. So, uh, 1 times 20, 20. Okay? 2 times 16, 32. And so, and, uh, so on. So, i-add ni medtech yan and the final number will be the lap score or the top low score. So, interpret natin to is this normal, leukemoid, or CML. Normal ang lap score. So, hindi yan leukemoid and hindi rin yan CML. So, ganito ginagawa ang lap scoring. Next, the, uh, um, this Group of conditions will produce an uh, increased number of WBC counts. Atong mga group of conditions na to ay tinatawag na myeloproliferative neoplasms. Proliferative, ibig sabihin madaming madaming cells sa bone marrow. Okay? And then, um, actually itong mga group of um, condition na to is also considered as cancerous dahil hindi nila sinusunod yung tamang cell cycle causing the proliferation of the cells. What are the causes or the pathophysiology of your myeloproliferative uh, disorders? Number one, hypersensitivity to hormones or growth factors. Halimbawa lang, no? hypersensitive ang bone marrow mo sa erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is a hormone that induces erythropoiesis or RBC production. Kung halimbawa na kahit nasa mababang levels lang yung EPO mo, if overreacting si bone marrow, it will produce a lot of RBC kahit hindi pa kailangan. And then the number two, independence. Ano ibig sabihin, sabihin itong independence na to? Ibig sabihin, hindi kahit Kahit walang mga hormones for uh, blood production, kaya na mag-produce on its own nung bone marrow, which is a bad news. Kasi kailangan ng regulators. No? Kailangan may magpapa-initiate, ma kailangan din may magpapa-suppress. Pero in this manner, 
kung may independence, walang nasusuppress or nag-regulate ng blood cell production. Okay, we have four types or classification of these disorders according to WHO. So, unahin natin itong CML. CML is, again, chronic myelogenous leukemia. So, ano ang mas nagproliferate na cell pagdating dito sa type of uh, condition? Siyempre, yung mga leukocytes or WBCs. Next naman is PV, polycythemia vera or in other books, polycythemia vera leukemia. No? Uh, this type of condition, ano naman ang mas nagproliferate? Siyempre, yung ating RBC. Okay? And then, yung ET, pakicorrect na lang ito, no? I-edit natin. Okay. Um, ET as, is again, pakicorrect, essential thrombocytemia yan. And then, uh, ano naman ang type of cell na mas dumadami in ET? Your platelets naman. Okay? Sa PMF or your primary myelofibrosis, Lahat ng blood cells madami. WBC, RBC, platelet, plus fibroblast. Kasi meron, uh, based sa name ng condition, myelofibrosis, so madami rin siyang fibrin or fibroblast. And uh, according to WHO, meron common denominator lahat itong myeloproliferative neoplasm, which is the genetic mutation of JAK2 um, JAK2 mutation. Pero may exception tayo dyan. Lahat ng myeloproliferative neoplasm has JAK2 mutation except your CML. So, take note yan. Okay. Pag-usapan natin ulit si chronic myelogenous leukemia. Or in other books, chronic granulocytic leukemia. Um, ang mean age of the patients having this kind of condition is 50 years old. So, masasabi natin na pang elderly itong type of leukemia na to. And again, uh, it has a genetic um, mutation called Philadelphia chromosome. Sa Philadelphia chromosome, meron tayong transposition of your chromosome 9 and 22 causing your fusion of ABL and BCR gene. So, paano ginagamit yan in clinics? Actually, nag-request lang nito to identify if the patient has a good prognosis or bad prognosis. The presence of your Philadelphia chromosome will um, dictate na merong good prognosis yung patient. Hindi siya ginagamit as pang-diagnose. Sa peripheral blood smear naman, makikita mo, no? Madaming granulocytes, kaya nga siya tinawag na chronic granulocytic leukemia, with blast uh, accumulation of less than 20%. Kapag nag-more than 20% na yan, convert na yung chronic malignant leukemia mo into acute myelogenous leukemia. So, ang cut-off is 20. And again, wala tong JAK2 mutation. Recall din natin, no, ba ang CML, kamukha niya ang leukemoid reaction. And ang, mag, ang easiest way to differentiate these two is through reviewing the uh, peripheral blood smear and gagawa ka ng kaplo, uh, kaplo or lap scoring. Lap score in leukemoid reaction is high. Lap scoring in CML is low. Again, kanina di ba nabanggit ko yung cut off natin between chronic and acute uh, leukemia. Di ba dapat 20%. So, in cases of yung, yung CML mo, uh, dumami yung kanyang blast to more than 20%, ang tawag na dun is blast crisis. And blast crisis leukemia can be converted into AML and ALL. So, ang magpapalito ha, ang blast crisis converts your CML into AML or ALL. So, depende ko ano ang dumami na type of uh, blast. Kung ang dumami na type of blast is myeloblast, 
So, magiging AML. Lymphoblast naman for ALL. Next naman, polycythemia niya vera. Pathophysiology niya, again, di ba? Same, same din yan. Hypersensitivity to erythropoietin by the bone marrow. And, uh, independence of your bone marrow to erythropoietin. Ibig sabihin, hindi na niya kailangan ng erythropoietin to produce RBC, which is, again, a bad thing. So, next, ano, paano natin i-diagnose yung PV or polycythemia vera? It has to be, uh, yung patient has, uh, has two major criteria plus one minor criteria. So, kailangan meron siyang increased hemoglobin levels plus your jack mutation. Okay? And one of these minor criteria. Panmyelosis. Anong ibig sabihin ng panmyelosis? Pan means all. Okay? So, lahat ng cells in the bone marrow, madami, bone marrow itong ano, BM. Okay? And then, decreased EPO levels. EPO is erythropoietin. Or, meron siyang mad, um, erythroid colony formation in vitro. So, ibig sabihin, kahit nasa labas na ng katawan, no, walang erythropoietin in, in the test tube, meron pa rin uh, production or ongoing RBC production. Okay, next, pakikorek na lang ulit. No? Essential thrombocytemia dapat yan. Anyway, so, based on WHO, ang, ang cut-off ng ET is above 450. Pero in your books, sa Rodax, ang cut-off for your ET is 600. So, basahin nyo na ng mabuti ang ating question, uh, yung questionnaire nyo, kung alin ang basis for your ET. Okay? And then, Ano, ano naman ang bad thing then with ET? Aside from thrombocytosis, the platelets being produced are dysfunctional or hindi naman nag, uh, hindi um, nagpe-perform ng hemostasis. Okay? So, meron ka ng thrombotic um, episodes, meron ka pang bleeding episode. So, it's a bad ano din, um, condition. And again, may JAK2 mutation ang ET. So, balikan natin ulit yung criteria natin for ET. So, magkaiba yung WHO and uh, RODAX criteria. Sa RODAX, again, above 600. Plus, ang hemoglobin mo dapat is less than 13 with stainable iron in the bone marrow. Sa WHO, mas marami ang kanyang criteria. Number one, dapat above 450 ang platelet count. Ang bone marrow na mo naman, kailangan megakaryopoesis um, dito, activity lang ang na-appreciate. Okay? Number three, no myelodysplasia. Ano ibig sabihin ng myelodysplasia? Yung um, incorrect differentiation of your bone cells, bone marrow cells. So, kailangan nasusunod pa rin yung tamang maturity of the blood cells. And lastly, the JAK2 mutation. Okay, lastly, in last condition sa myeloproliferative neoplasms natin is primary myelofibrosis or PMF. Dito naman, again, no, madami lahat ang cells plus your fibroblast. So, tingnan natin, madaming leukocytes, tama? Madaming RBC in the form of dacrocyte. And madaming platelet uh, at the level of megakaryocyte and fibroblast, which produce, which is the basis of the name. No? Kaya myelofibrosis. And then, another important uh, to take note is the ultimate complication of your PMF, which is the splenomegaly or enlargement of the Spleen. So, ano ang pathophysiology of enlargement of spleen in PMF? Number one, so since madaming-madaming cells, so marami din ang mga namamatay. Okay? 
So, sino ba yung organ na kumakain ng mga dead or senescent cells? Yung ating spleen. So, meron tayong increased sequestration or increase uh, tag dito, um, increased size of spleen dahil madaming kinakain na old cells. And then, next is extramedullary hematopoiesis. Ano ibig sabihin ng extramedullary? Outside the bone marrow, yung bone cell production. Bakit pa nagkakaroon ng, ano, ng outside bone marrow? Eh, sobrang OA na yung bone marrow mo in producing cells. Kasi ganito yan, itong mga cells na pinuproduce ng bone marrow mo, very defective. Okay? So, kailangan mag-adjust ng katawan mo to produce a bo bone cells which are functional. So, hanap siya ng mga organs na kaya mag-produce ng mga functional bone cells such as your spleen. Kaya, meron ding enlargement ng spleen. Okay, next group of disorders are your qualitative disorders. And this include, number one, ano, may mali sa itsura or the morphology or may mali sa uh, action or the function of the cell. And in sa madalas na um, event, pwede both of the morphology and function are deranged. Okay? So, unahin natin sa mga qualitative WBC disorder is the pelger huwet anomaly. So, ano meron sa pelger huwet? There, there is a decreased segmentation of the nucleus or tinatawag natin hyposegmentation. Ilan ba dapat ang segment ng nucleus ng mga WBC? So, ilan, uh, supposedly dapat 2 to 5. Okay? Less than 2 or equal to 2, um, mag, ang itsura niya, niya ngayon, no, mukhang peanut shape or pinsness morphology. Ang tinatawag natin bilobe morphology. So, mamaya pakita natin ano ba ibig sabihin ng pinsness. And then, in other WBCs, ma-appreciate mo din na kukunti yung kanilang granulation due to clumping. Nagsasama-sama na. Okay? So, tinatawag natin hypogranulation. So, in pelger huwet, no, tandaan natin, there is hyposegmentation and hypogranulation. Okay? And then, pelger huwet also, is also a genetic disorder. It affects the lamin B receptor gene, which is uh, responsible for the uh, morphology, um, specifically with your the, um, neutrophils. Okay. Ano ulit yung pinsness? Yung pinsness is actually an old man's glasses. No? Ito yung type of dust na tinatawag ni pinsness. So, mukha daw siya lang pinsness. Ito, lalo na dito. Ito naman mukhang peanut shape. Nawalan ng segmentations. Actually, isang segment lang ito. Itong buong ito. Okay, we have True versus pseudo. Pseudo means false. So, mukha lang siyang spelger huwet, pero in, actu in actuality, hindi talaga siya pelger huwet. So, at paano mo madi-differentiate ngayon yung totoong pelger huwet versus the pseudo pelger huwet? Okay. So, number one, number of cells affected by the hyposegmentation. Kung more than 60% of the WBCs are hyposegmented, ibig sabihin true pelger huwet yan. Pag lesser cells, false. Okay? Pseudo pelger huwet. And then next, sa true pelger huwet, lahat ng WBC lineages affected. In pel pseudo pelger huwet naman, neutrophils lang. Yung mga mature neutrophils lang ang meron. Okay? And then, in true pelger wet, ma-appreciate mo ang normal granulation. Okay? Halos ng mga WBCs. Sa pseudo pelger wet, meron tayong hypogranulation. Next, kung merong hypo, meron, tay meron din tayong hypersegmented. Ibig sabihin, it contains more than 5 lobes. And 
it is actually uh, associated with megaloblastic anemia. Um, kung matatandaan nyo yung megaloblastic anemia, it is caused by the deficiencies of folic acid and your vitamin B12 or cyanocobalamin. So, meron tayo ni Monix na ho-ho para matandaan nyo kung ano ang meron sa megaloblastic anemia. So, we have no, hyper-segmented neutrophils yung for age. Next, yung letter O is ovalocytes. And then, your next set of letters, HO, is for Howell Jolly Bodies. So, para matandaan nyo, ano yung mga features ng megaloblastic anemia, tandaan nyo tong mnemonics. Okay, balik tayo. Balik tayo dito sa ating neutrophil hypersegmentation. So, aside from that, um, ano ba ang pathophysiology? Bakit dumadami yung lobes ng neutrophil nila? It is due to myelocatexis. Ano ibig sabihin ng myelocatexis? This is actually the cell retention in bone marrow. Kailangan ng lumabas ng WBC mo out of the bone marrow and yet, hindi lumalabas. So, ano ang, ang consequence ng myelocatexis? So, pwedeng, uh, it, it can cause normal neutrophil production dahil normal naman, no? Normal naman yung number, pero hindi lang lumalabas. And it, kapag hindi lumalabas yung neutrophil out of the bone marrow, continuous pa rin yung segmentation of the nucleus. Kaya nagkakaroon ng hypersegmentation. So, kapag hypersegmented na, hindi na, or hindi na siya pwedeng lumabas out of the system due to the deranged morphology. So, naman, uh, it is associated with another syndrome called WIM syndrome. And WIM syndrome is actually a mnemonics which stands for number one, warts. Okay? Number two, hypogamma globulinemia. Ano ibig sabihin nitong hypogamma globulinemia? Decrease levels of your gamma globulins or in the form of um, antibodies. Okay? So, bagsak ang mga antibody production mo. So, since mababa yung mga gamma globulins mo, hirap ka rin to fight off infections. So, may multiple infections ka rin due to bacteria and fungi. And lastly, yung last M is myelocatexis. Again, your myelocatexis is the cell retention in the bone marrow. Okay, next condition is elder Riley anomaly, which contains the large dark staining granules. Uh, saan nang galing itong mga large dark, dark staining granules? This is actually your waste products na pinroduce ng iyong lysosomes. And itong mga waste products na to, naiipon sa loob ng WBC. Hindi sila nadudurog completely. Okay? Ang mga waste products na to is what you call the mucopolysaccharides. And merong mga condition na nakakapag-produce ng or hindi nakakapag-degrade nito mga mucopolysaccharides called your mucopolysaccharidosis. And this group of conditions, itong mga to, Hunter, Hurler, San Filippo, these are all associated with Alder Riley anomaly. Okay. Ano, ano ulit ang uh, mga dark staining granules na to? These are your mucopolysaccharides. And again, may kita in Alder Riley anomaly. Ano yung mga example ng mga condition na nagkakos ng ganitong uh, anomaly? Your mucopolysaccharidosis such as Hunter, Hurler, San Filippo, yung mga yan. Next condition is Chejak-Higashi syndrome. Sa Chejak-Higashi syndrome, recall lang natin that the platelets and at the same time your WBCs are enlarged due to the abnormal fusion of the granules. And this is also an inherited disorder. Ano yung genetic mutation involved in this 
syndrome. Ang mutation is at the chromosome 1, lalong lalo na in CHS1 LYST gene. And this mutation can cause lazy WBCs dahil nga sobrang laki, ni, laki nila and mabigat due to the fusion of the granules, hirap gumalaw yung mga WBC. So therefore, ang consequence niyan is the patient will have recurrent pyogenic infection. Paulit-ulit na tag ito, bacterial infection. So, under microscope, ito yung mga fusion of the granules. So, ito yung nagpapabigat din sa WBC. So, hirap silang, ano dito, sobrang laki na fusion. Hirap silang gumalaw. So, tinitawag natin mga lazy WBCs. Next is may Heglin anomaly. Dito naman, merong um, abnormality in the myosin heavy chain. So, MH or myosin heavy chains. Para wala, wag kayo magpapalito. Okay? And again, inherited disorder ito. And ano, ano yung genetic point mutation niya? It's, it is at MYH9 gene at chromosome 22. And this will cause your Dole body's production in WBCs. And another problem is that it can cause macrothrombocyte o tinatawag natin giant platelets. So ano tong mga Dole bodies na to? These, uh, these are actually accumulated RER o tinatawag natin rough endoplasmic reticulum. So na, na, na dapat wala na in mature WBCs. So, the persistence of your RER, ito, halimbawa dito sa mature neutrophil na to, is what you call the Dole bodies. And madalas, associated sila with my may Heglin anomaly. And yung sa may Heglin anomaly, anong abnormality ulit? MH, myosin, heavy chains. Next disorder is CGD. CGD stands for Chronic Granulomatous Disease. And ano ang nagkakos ng granuloma dito? This is caused by the inability of your WBC to produce enzymes or mga compounds to fight off infection. Ano ba yung mga compounds na yon? Your superoxide and ROS or reactive oxygen species. And bakit nga ba wala itong mga compound nito? Due to the absence of the NADPH oxidase enzyme. Okay? Uh, absent ka nito, so wala ka na produce na mga compound to, to fight off your um, bacteria. And ano ba yung process of um, degra degradation of bacteria due, um, with the help of this compound? The process is what you call the respiratory burst. Respiratory burst ang tawag dahil kailangan niya ng oxygen. Okay? So, kaya um, isa yung isa sa mga um, materials or ingredients to produce this type of compounds is oxygen. Okay? And ayun nga, um, so dahil... Hirap ka, gumawa, uh, hirap ka gumawa ng mga ganitong compounds, hirap ka rin mag-fight off, off ng mga bacterial infection. So, therefore, meron kang incomplete scarring. This scarring is called your granuloma. Okay? So, ang pinakaunang, pinakaunang problem mo dyan is the NADPH oxidase causing the uh, inability of neutrophil Respiratory burst brought about by the absence of superoxide and ROS. Therefore, producing your granulomas. So, under microscope, ito yung granuloma na sinasabi natin. Okay? Itong uh, abscess na to, okay? Actually, meron pumupunta naman na mga WBC. Pero, ini-enclose lang niya. Kasi hindi niya kayang patayin totally yung bacterial um, content ng 
um, abscess. So, therefore, itong formation na to, no, abscess na encircling with WBC is what you call the, the granuloma. Okay. We have laboratory tests for CGD. It's what you call the nitro blue tetrazolium reduction test. Anong ginagawa natin dito sa nit nitro blue tetrazolium reduction test? So first, uh, i-expose mo yung mga normal WBC with your reagent, okay, which is a, has a yellow compound. Kapag normal, no, yung ating WBC activities. So magkakaroon ng respiratory burst. Um Magkakaroon ng reaction of your nitro blue tetrazolium with ciproxide and your ROS, forming your formazan compound. And formazan compound will convert the yellow color into dark blue color. Kapag walang oxidation, no? ibig sabihin walang respiratory burst na nangyari, mariretain ngayon yung color yellow as final result in lalo na na in CGD. Di ba sa CGD, walang respiratory burst. So, yellow pa rin yung color niya at the end of the laboratory test. So, under microscope, this is the positive result. Again, what, what is the compound na nagpapablue dun sa color ng uh, nitro blue tetrazolium? It is the formazan. Dito naman, Medyo hindi nyo ma-appreciate yung yellow kasi medyo orange pa siya, no? This is a negative result. So, kapag tetrazolium negative, ibig sabihin, meron siyang CGD. Next is leukocyte adhesion disorder. Kasi one of the function of your WBC is to adhere with endothelial cells. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng endothelial cells? These are the lining of your blood vessels. Okay? Kailangan niya mag-adhere doon to be able to travel along the bloodstream. Okay? So, we have three types of LAD or leukocyte adhesion disorder and depende kung anong genetic mutation. Kapag LAD1, ang mutation niya is exon 5 to 9 and the defect will affect the beta-2 integrin receptor, which is a protein for, one of the proteins for the adhesion to blood vessels. LAD2 naman, mutation in SLC35C1, which affect the fructose transportation. And lastly, your LAD3, mutation of your kindlin 3 which affect the activation or yung paggising ng WBC, no? Leukocyte activation. So, we have, wala tayong choice but to memorize these numbers and terms. At wala akong maisip na mnemonics. Okay, next naman, myeloperoxidase deficiency. Si myeloperoxidase deficiency is solely found in primary granules lang ng mga neutrophil plus lysosome of your monocyte. So, it will affect the activity of these two type of RB, uh, WBC only. Okay? Para saan naman si myeloperoxidase? Kamukha siya ni ROS and superoxide. Then, it will act as um, compound to fight off bacteria. Okay? So, magpapalito with the, um, the the two conditions, CGD and myeloperoxidase. Another importance of your myeloperoxidase, this is an enzyme which produces your hypochlorite and hypochlorous acid which is supposedly affects the membrane of the bacteria. Diba ang ating bleach is made up of uh, chlorine? So, ito rin yung kamukha niya. No? Ito yung the same enzyme which attacks or which degrades the membrane of the bacteria. Again, this is an inherited disease. Ang mutation niya is at MPO gene on chromosome 17.
Next disorders or next quant qualitative disorders are your lysosomal storage disorders. Again, ano nga ba ang um, silbi ng lysosome? This is for the degradation of your waste products. Kung may, um, kung may abnormality with your lysosome, hindi mo nade-degrade ng maayos ang waste products mo, naiiwan lang sa loob ng cell yung mga waste na to. Okay? And most commonly mechanism of uh, associated with lysosomal di storage disorders are enzyme deficiencies. And enzyme is supposedly for the degradation of the waste products. Ano ang in mode of inheritance usually kapag enzyme deficiency? Back in cytogenetics, di ba? Kapag deficient protein, ibig sabihin recessive in um, in pattern. So, almost all autosomal recessive in pattern yan. As a result, yun nga, mag-accumulate yung mga waste products natin such as your glycosaminoglycans or mga lipids natin. Example of this, the most common is Gaucher's disease and your Neiman pick disease. So, discuss natin tong dalawang ito. Nahin natin si Gaucher's disease, which is, again, the most common type of lysosomal storage disorder. Ano ang deficient in Gaucher's disease? It is the enzyme called beta-glucocerebrosidase, beta which is found in chromosome 1. Kapag wala ka nito, naiipon yung compound called glucocerebroside. So, wag pa pa ito kung alin ang deficient and anong compound yung nag-accumulate. Remember, lagi, no? Kapag ganitong mga disorder, enzyme ang kulang. So, ASE yung ating um, suffix in enzyme. Okay? So, magpa wag magpapalit ito sa dalawa. And to diagnose your Gaucher's disease, you have to fulfill these three criteria. The triad of hepatomegaly, which is the enlargement of your liver, plus the presence of your Gaucher cell in the bone marrow, and the increase in serum phosphatase in liver. Yung mga ALP, 5 NP, and GGT. Okay? So, anong itsura ng Gaucher cell in bone marrow? It is described as Crumpled paper appearance. So, ito daw yung parang nilukot na papel. No, yung cyto, lalo na lang sa cytoplasm ng mga WBCs. And we have special laboratory tests for Gaucher's disease. Number one, yung ating Cheetotrosidase is a biomarker for screening for the accumulation of the glucocerebroside. Pakicorrect na lang yung ating handout. Dapat glucocerebroside yan. Etong cheetotrosidase is for the accumulation of this compound. While the pass or periodic acid shift is for the enzyme. Okay? Pass negative sa Gaucher kapag walang presence of your glucocerebrosidase. Kasi kailangan may presence of this enzyme to, in order to become positive in past stain test. So again, ito yung mga um, tag dito, accumulation of the um, glycosaminoglycan. So mukha silang mga crumpled paper under microscope supposedly. Okay, next naman is Neiman Pick disease. Ang deficient natin dyan, again, enzyme dapat yan. So, ASE, okay, sphingomyelinase. Ang accumulated is the protein, sphingomyelin. Okay, and then, ano ang tawag naman sa cell? From the name itself, Neiman Pick cells. Ano ang difference ng Neiman Pick cells sa Gaucher cell? Ang Neiman Pick cells has foamy cytoplasm. Bakit foamy? Mukhang bula. No? Kasi it has lipids. No? As compared with your like, um, Gaucher cell which has glycosaminoglycans, 
Dito naman, mga lipids ang meron sila. Diba? Again, lipids are stain resistant. So, walang kulay under microscope supposedly. So, ayan. Kung makikita nyo, no? Hindi sila nag-take up ng stains. So, again, we have lymphocyte disorder na. So, kanina, no? Mga general WBC, ano talaga? Pang neutrophil and monocyte problem. So, dito tayo focus din. Mag-lymphocyte disorder din tayo. And again, we have two uh, types of lymphocyte. Generally, we have T-cell, B-cell, and also NK-cell. Pero hindi madalas sinasama yung uh, NK-cell kasi kukunti lang sila in, in your bloodstream. No? Pinakamarami pa rin dyan is your T-cells. Okay? So, umpisahan natin with ano ba yung mga disorders affecting your T-cells. So, we have your DeGeorge syndrome. And then, pag B-cells naman, X-link agamaglobulinemia or Bruton's disease or Bruton's agamaglobulinemia. So, pare-parehas yan pagdating sa books ninyo. Kung magbabasa kayo ng book. Okay? Pero, practicality, no? Practicality-wise, wag na kayo magbasa sa ngayon. More on handouts na kayo. Kasi supposedly nagbasa na kayo ng libro during your academic days. And then we have combined T and B, uh, B cell uh, problems which is, uh, which involves your SCID or com severe combined immunodeficiency and Wiscott Aldrich syndrome. So babalikan natin yan. Uh, later on. So, unahin muna natin yung ating DeGeorge Syndrome. Sa DeGeorge Syndrome, again, ang problem mo dito is your T-cells. Bakit nagkakaproblema ang T-cells? Kasi the, uh, the pathophysiology of the DeGeorge Syndrome is a thymus problem. Uh, kung maalala nyo, the, diba, ang, dito lang ang site ng differentiation and maturity of your T-cells. Pero ang T-cells is majority produced in your bone marrow. Kung maalala nyo yung ating rule about T-cells, T-cells are produced in the bone marrow, uh, ang maturity nasa site of your thymus. So kung wala kang thymus, walang mature T-cells, nagkakaroon ng DeGeorge Syndrome. But not only that, marami pa rin, marami din problema sa DeGeorge Syndrome. So, alalahanin natin yung ating um, demonics na catch-22. So, ano ibig sabihin ng catch-22? Number one, um, ay consider natin, no, lahat ng problema ng DeGeorge Syndrome nasa gitna. Kung malala nyo yung thymus, di ba nasa, ano yan, chest area yan, katabi yan ng lungs. So, meron tayong problema in thymus. Meron din tayong problema in the heart. Nasa gitna yan, right? Meron tayong problema sa face. Abnormal facies, no? Hindi pantay yung facial features. Yan. Thymus. Cleft palate. No? Nasa gitna yung bibig natin. Okay? And, meron tayong decrease calcium production brought about by the problem of your um, thyroid naman. Which is, nasa ng thyroid glands nyo? Di ba nasa gitna din? Right? And, yun yung sinasabi ko, lahat ng problema ng DeGeorge nasa gitna. So, isipin nyo lahat ng mga organs na nasa gitna. Thymus, thyroid, heart, okay? Cleft palate. And, uh, due to your thyroid problem, bumababa ang kalsyo. Okay? And anong chromosomal number affect ang genetic mutation ng DeGeorge na sa 22? Kaya, tinawag, uh, kaya ang mnemonics is catch-22. Okay? Kung gets nyo tong mnemonics, wala tayong problema. So, ito yung picture ng abnormal fasci in DeGeorge syndrome. And again, sabi ko nga, hindi pantay yung facial features nila. Okay? Yung side na to, no, medyo slanted yung mata. Dito naman, pabilog. So, kung ma-appreciate, ma obviously naman, obvious naman yung ano, yung difference ng right side sa left side. 
B-cell problem naman tayo. Sa B-cell problem, again, nandito yung Bruton's disease. So, from, eh, sorry. From dun sa ating letter B. Okay. So, pang B-cell yan. Okay, Bruton's. And, another name is X-link agamoglobinin niya. Kasi, X-link inheritance siya. So, more common siya in what gender? Male or female? Sa mga male. Kasi, XY ang male, right? Kung defective yung X ng XY, walang magsisave dun sa X. Kaya, mas prominent yung um, disease dun sa mga males. So, di ba ang ating female X? Di pantay ang aking word. Sorry, ah. Dito ang ating female, right? Kung defective yung isa, may magsisave na healthy X. So, hindi prominent yung B-cell disease sa mga females. As compared sa mga male, kung defective yung isa, hindi masisave ni Y yung defective X. Kaya, full-blown yung disease sa mga males. Okay. And ano ang genetic mutation ng mga X-link agamoglobinin niya na sa BTK gene. Okay, BTK gene is expressed uh, in low amounts. So, causing the poor B-cell development or the differentiation or the maturity of the B-cells. Okay, dito naman tayo sa mga combined T and B-cell problem. Unahin natin yung severe combined immunodeficiency. We have two types of this. So, we have X-link. Again, pag X-link, ang mas problema din natin dito, yung mga males. Kasi mas full-blown full dito. Ang less common naman is your adenosine deaminase deficiency. Okay? Pakicorrect na lang, no? Accumulation of adenosine deaminase ito. Tapos, ang genetic dis disorder naman with X-link is the receptor called interleukin 2. The difference between these two disorder is the manifestation. Sa so extinct acid, absent ang NK, decreased T, and dysfunctional ang B cell, although in normal numbers. Sa so adenosine deaminase naman, lahat, no, NK, T, and B cells are absent or depleted. Next type is, again, combination of our T-cell and B-cell problem. Viscott-Aldrich syndrome. Sa Viscott-Aldrich syndrome, ang absent is their WAS protein gene, or WASP. And this gene is responsible for the migration, adhesion, activation of your both T-cell and B-cell. Okay? And uh, kailangan ma-fulfill niya yung tatlong criteria to be diagnosed with Viscott-Aldrich syndrome. Kailangan niya na yung platelet count is mababa or thrombocytopenia, immunodeficiency, mababang levels of your uh, immunoglobulins, and eczema, which is a skin condition. So, ang ating mnemonics dyan is TAI. So, the next group of disorders naman, yung mga cancerous natin, no? the malignant leukocyte disorders. Unahin natin yung mga types of leukemia. So, we have two criteria or two operational definition of your uh, leukemias. So, according to Rodax, kailangan ma-appreciate mo in your bone marrow the rapid and the clonal proliferation of either lymphoblast or myeloblast. Kasi dito ma-differentiate kung magiging ALL ba siya or magiging AML. While in WHO, kailangan mabibilang mo. No? At least 20% or more para ma-diagnose ma mo as acute. Okay? 
So, kailangan matandaan nyo yung 20%. Before, may bang books nagsasabi, no? 30% daw. I think, dit sa browns to. Pero, more common ginagamit na criteria is the 20% criteria. Okay, generalization. So, lahat ng leukemia, ma-appreciate mo na maraming blast, no? either 20 or 30%. Pero kahit na madaming blast, di ba, sa, in general, akala mo, okay. Dahil mad, mas maraming blast, mas maraming WBCs. Pero in actuality, this WBCs has a deranged lifespan. Mas maikli, no? mas madali silang mamatay, kahit na marami sila. And in PBS, ma-appreciate mo yung shift to the left. Again, yung left term na to, ibig sabihin, mas maraming immature cells. Pagdating naman sa bone marrow, ano ang ME ratio? Ano ba yung ME na yan? ME means your myeloid erythroid ratio. Ano ang ratio ng mga blast ng WBC as compared sa mga blast ng mga RBC? And yung MA ratio natin pagdating sa leukemia is more than 10 is to 1. So, mas maraming myeloid as compared to your erythroid ng more than 10. Okay? The type of anemia associated with leukemia is almost always normo normo Okay? Laging normo normo kapag dating sa mga anemia, leukemia associated anemias. Okay, rule of thumb again, no? Paano ka magda-diagnose ng acute sa chronic? Sa mga acute, madalas yan sa mga bata or pediatric age and the blast number are supposedly more than 20%. Masasabi mo na acute myelogenous kapag mas marami granulocyte blast, kapag acute lymphocytic, mas marami lymphocyte blast. In comparison with your chronic, Okay, adult age yan, so madalas sa mga matatanda, the blasts are much lesser at less than 20%. Chronic myelogenous leukemia, kapag ang blast ay mas maraming, I mean, mas maraming granulocytic blast. Chronic lymphocytic, kapag mas maraming lymphocyte blast. Pero meron tayong exception to the rule. Meron tayong tinatawag na bimodal. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng bimodal? Ibig sabihin, both age yan. Affected. Oops. So, sino yung mga, anong klaseng type of leukemia yan? Yung acute lymphocytic leukemia. It can affect two uh, age groups. Pwede sa elderly, pwede sa bata. So, nine natin ALL and again, um, aside from being bimodal, pagdating sa mga bata, this is the most common cause. MCC is most common cause. Okay? Uh, anong dalawang group of uh, age group yung kaya niyang i-affect? So, either 2 to 5 years old or older than 50 years old. And one of the main cause of ALL is actually the conversion from your CML. O tinatawag natin blast crisis. Lalong lalo na sa mga matatanda. Dati silang CML. Okay? Nagkaroon lang ng blast crisis na convert lang yung CML niya into ALL. So, we have two types of ALL. We have the B-cell type and the T-cell type. So, paano natin i-differentiate yung dalawang yan? So, balik tayo sa patient. Differentiate natin yung kanyang signs and symptoms. No? For both B-cell and T-cell, parehas silang nagkakaroon ng anemia, thrombocytopenia, and bone pains. Bakit nagkakaroon ng bone pains? Kasi yung mga lymphocyte nagtatago sa mga bones. No? Na-accumulate sila doon, destroying the bone structure. Kaya nagkakaroon ng bone pains. And... Recall din natin anong klaseng type of anemia kapag leukemia, normo, normo yan. Okay? And ma-differentiate mo sila based on signs and symptoms. Sa B-cell, more, more common ang kanilang 
spinomegaly, and lymph adenopathy. Ano ba yung lymph adenopathy? Ito yung mga kulane. Okay? Lalong lalo na sa mga neck area. Ang spinomegaly naman is the enlargement of the spleen. And much more severe ang leukopenia pagdating kay B cell ALL. Mas madaling mamatay yung mga WBCs. Kaya mas bawas yung WBC count. Sa T cell naman, pag upon physical examination, ma-appreciate mo na mayroong um, tumor or mass bukol sa lalo na sa mediastinum. Ano ba tong mediastinum na to? This is actually the chest wall. Okay? Ano ang ibig sabihin ng bukol sa mediastinum? Ibig sabihin persistent yung organ na thymus. 'Di ba ang pinag-uusapan natin ang thymus dapat mag, mag ano yan? Mag apoptose at the age of 13 years old. Dapat hindi yan persistent. Kapag naging persistent yan, mat-turn yan into a cancer, no? Or a tumor causing your T cell ALL. Pagdating naman sa laboratory diagnosis, ibig sabihin, halimbawa, no, hindi kayo pa rin sure based on the physical examination of the patient. You proceed with the CD markings, okay? Or the, tal dito, um, uh, cytochemical staining. So, in common denominator nila, both B cell and T cell will, be, will turn positive in CD34. Positive din siya with TDT, which stands for terminal deoxynucleotidyl transferase, and positive with HLDR. Okay? But they differentiate mo lang sila by the CD markings. Kapag B cell, no need to memorize kasi kapag B cell, double numbers yung mga yan. Kapag T cell, kung mapapansin nyo, mga single numbers. Para huwag mapalito, okay? Pag T, single number lang yan. Pag B, double numbers. Okay, we have classification of your ALL based on this type of uh, dito, mga group of scientists. FAB stands for your French, American, British classification. They classify your ALL according to L1. L2, and L3. So, paano ang description ng mga L1, L2, L3? Ano ang itsura ng mga lymphocyte nila? Sa L1, they are small and homogeneous in size. Ano ang ibig ng homogeneous? Pantay-pantay yung pagka-small nila. Okay? And these are uh, the type of ALL common in children or tinatag natin childhood ALL. So, may mga markings din yan. These are positive in your CD10, no? Or tinatag natin si kala uh, markings. Ang kala is also called your common ALL antigen. Or in other books, CD, CD10 ang pangalan. Positive din siya with TDT, CD19, and CD20. Okay. In L2 naman, large heterogeneous. Malalaki, pero hindi ganun kapantay yung mga size. Okay? And this is common in adults. Kaya, kaya siya tinawag na adulthood ALL. This is only positive for TDT. Sa L3 naman, large pero Homogeneous. So, pantay-pantay yung size nila. And then, L3 is also known as your Burkitt's lymphoma. We discussed din natin yan later on. And the positive uh, cytochemical staining natin dyan is are your CD19, 20, 22, and 24. So, in terms of size, ano ang basis natin dyan? So, i-compare mo yung lymphocyte mo so, halimbawa ito yung lymphocyte with your what cell? Your RBC. Okay? Kapag magkasing size yung uh, lymphocyte mo with your RBC, ibig sabihin, these are small lymphocyte. Kapag mas malaki sila, 
large lymphocyte na sila. Okay? Ang comparison niyan is yung mga RBCs. So, other cytochemical staining na ginagamit to differentiate your L1, L2, L3 are as follows. Pass or periodic acid shift with re which results to all positive except L3, methyl green pyronine, all negative except L3, and all oil red O, lahat naman sila positive. Pero mas ginagamit ang mga CD markings as compared dito sa mga cytochemical stains. Okay, dito naman tayo sa mga AML. AML is actually binago na yung kanilang pangalan. Ang pangalan na ngayon is acute non-lymphocytic leukemia. Ano naman, paano naman kinaklasify ito ng FAB or the French American British Association? So, meron tayong M0 papunta sa M7. So, ako ginroup ko to para mas madaling aralin, no? M0 to M3, M4 to M4A yo. Meron tayong two types of M5, okay? And M5, M6. So, ginroup ko ng ganito para mas madaling intindihin. So, unahin natin yung M0 to M3 group. So, paano yan i-review? Kapag M0, 0 stands for no differentiation. So, undifferentiated leukemia yan. Wala kang makikita at all na mature and granulocyte uh, cells. So, sa M1 naman, slight lang na maturation, no? May ma-appreciate ka na blast at the same time, may ma-appreciate ka rin na mga mature cells. And this M1 is the most common type of your ANL or AML. Sa M2, with, with enough maturation. Okay? So, may makikita ka, makikita mo as compared with the blast, mas konti na lang yung mga blast mo dito. Okay? And madami na yung mga mature cells mo. And dito mag-uumpisa ang production of your hour rods. Okay? Sa M3, ano ba ang next na mature cell after your myeloblast? Your promyelocyte. So this is what you call your acute promyelocytic leukemia. So, meron kang blast, meron kang mature cells, pero predominantly pro-myelocytes ang madami sa bone marrow mo. So, aside from our, our rods, there is also accumulation of your fagot cells. Fagot cells only means na madaming our rods sa loob. Okay? And dito rin makikita yung major cause of death na DIC. So, mas namamatay sila sa DIC as compared to the leukemia itself. Okay? So, lagyan natin ng star. So, merong hour rods, may fagot cell, may DIC pa sa M3 type of leukemia. Okay, mga M4 naman na natin. Aralin natin itong mga to. So, sa M4 or also known as your myelo monocytic Leukemia. So, it has a combination of your myeloblast and monocytes. Ang other name niya is your Nigeli syndrome. Okay? So, again, in your, peep, in your bone marrow aspirate, meron kang myeloblast and then meron ka rin monocytes. Sa M4A yun naman, ayan, may, mayroon tayong clue kung ano madami din dyan. Marami silang eosinophil or tinatang eosinophilia. So, may, pagdating sa bone marrow, ma-appreciate mo, meron kang mga abnormal eosinophils. M5 naman, these are group of your disorders affecting the monocyte lineage. Okay? And ito yung tinatawag natin uh, shilling's leukemia. Sa M5A, okay, sa A naman, wala pang maturation or differentiation. Ang tinatawag natin, 
a mall poorly differentiated. Mas marami ang mga baby kaysa sa mga mature cells. Sa M5B, meron na. Okay? So, this is a well-differentiated type of M5. So, mas maraming mature as compared to your baby cells. Okay, next naman, pinagsama ko sa M6 and M7. Dahil medyo weird itong mga to. May, uh, may myeloblast ka na, meron ka pang blast from your RBC lineage. No? Madami ka rin erythroblast. Kaya tinawag din siyang erythroleukemia. And this is also known as the de Guglielmo syndrome. So, magpapa ito sa mga other names. Okay? Nigeli for M4. Shillings for M5. De Guglielmo for M6. So, M7 naman. Madaming megakaryocyte. So, tinawag din siyang acute megakaryocytic leukemia. So, aside from that, no, from your bone marrow aspirate um, observation, meron din mga special stain. A special stain for your M6 is pus or periodic acid shift. And for M7, factor 8. Okay? So, ang basa dito is factor 8. Wala lang, nice to know. Baka lumitaw lang sa exam. Okay, so aside from that uh, observation of your bone marrow, paano mo madidifferentiate yung mga M0 to M7? Gagamit ka ng mga cytochemical stains. So unahin natin i-discuss yung stain na myeloperoxidase. Makikita to o magiging positive yung cell kapag present ang mga primary granules only. Okay? So, sino lang ang may mga primary granules? Yung mga may mga madaming blasts. Okay? So, sino yung mga madaming mga baby cells? Yung M1, M2, M3, M4. Okay? Absent sila sa mga lymphocyte and monocyte. So, absent siya sa ALL, absent din siya sa, A, sa M5. Again, your M5 are your monocytic lineage. So, absent supposedly si MPO sa M5. So, then, black B naman or SBB can be found in your primary plus secondary granules. So, blast plus mature cells. Okay? Absent naman in lymphocyte. Non-specific. Ano ibig sabihin ng non-specific? Pwede siya maging positive. Pwede rin maging negative. Okay? So, sa M1, 2, 3, and 4, positive si SBB. Negative sa ALL. Positive-negative pagdating sa M5. Dito naman sa mga esterases, ginagamit din yung mga yan sa mga as, as cytochemical staining. Uh, kinaklassify din sila according to specificity. Ano ba tong specificity na to? If it's specific to your granules. No? Kapag merong granules, ibig sabihin specific yung ating esterase. Unahin natin yung NASDA or Naftol ASD chloroacetate esterase. Specific siya, so present lang or positive siya with granulocytes. Absent sa mga walang granules such as your lymphocyte and monocyte. So, positive in M1, 2, and 2, 3, and 4. Negative in ALL, negative in M5. Dito naman, at sa mga non-specific, okay, pwede silang maging positive with uh, non-granular non cells such as your monocytes. Okay? So, alpha naphthyl butyrate esterase and B is present in or positive in monocytes. So, magpa-positive lang dyan is your M4 and M5. Bakit may kasamang M4? Kung mababalikan nyo, no, yung pangalan ng M4 natin, di ba? 
myelomonocytic leukemia. So, AMML. So, may presence of your monocytes. Sa alpha naphthyl acetate esterase naman, again, non-specific. So, uh, present siya sa mga non-granular cell. M monocyte, megakaryocyte, no? and negative yan sa mga um, tag dito, lymphocyte and granular containing leukemia. So, negative sa ALL, M1, M2, and M3. Positive with M4, M5, and megakaryocyte. So, kasama si M7. So, paano natin yan gagamitin itong information na to? So, gagamitin natin ito for interpretation of the results. Okay? Kung halimbawa, no, magbibigay ako ng case study, magbibigay ako ng mga results ng mga ganito. Puhulaan nyo kung ng type of leukemia sila. Okay? Halimbawa sa ALL, again, no, uh, negative siya halos. Magpa-positive lang yan, anong gagamitin mo ng mga markings? Yung mga CD, no? Diba? Nalala nyo yung mga CD34, TDT, and HLDR. So, ito, yung, ito lang ang pwede mong gamitin in ALL. In AML types, M1, 2, and 3. Positive sila again with your MPO. SBB and NASDA negative kay ANBE dahil uh, positive lang sila sa mga non-granules. Okay? Negative kay, An kay ANA, no? acetate ester esterase natin dahil again positive lang sila sa mga non-granular cells. Pagdating kay M4 naman, okay? positive kay MPO, SBB, NASDA, ANB, and ANA. So, lahat ng cytochemical staining, positive kay M4. So, pakilagyan na natin ng star yan. Okay. Sa M5 naman. M5, medyo nakakalito to. Okay? Negative kay MPO. Positive negative kay SBB dahil non-specific siya sa mga monocytes. Negative kay NASDA, positive kay ANB and ANA dahil positive for non-granular cells. Okay? M6 naman. Pagdating kay M6, no, very non-specific sila, no? Active negative kay MPO, SBB, NASDA, negative kay ANB and ANA. Kung ganito kalito yung ating results, ano ang next step mo? You request for what specific stain? Ano nabanggit ko kanina? Yung ating pass. Oops. So, this is the only acute myelogenous leukemia na pass positive. Okay? M7 naman. Lahat negative except your ANA, no? ANAE, asterate, ay acetate esterase. Kasi it can only um, stain your monocyte and megakaryocyte. Okay? So, it takes time to memorize. Basta intindihin nyo yung principle of the test. Saan ba magpa-positive? Saan sila makikita? No? Ano? Sa granular cells ba? Sa non-granular? Sa megakaryocyte ba? Sa monocytic cells ba? Okay? So, ganito, aaralin itong slide na to. Okay, let's proceed. May nakikita na ba kayo sa inyong screens? Okay, so last na tayo. Kapit lang. No? Limphomas na tayo. So, ginroup ko yung lymphoma according to uh, affectation, no? So, unahin natin yung mga lymphoma specific for B cell. Next, yung specific sa T cell. And a type of Hodgkin's na 
applicable for both B and T cell, which is Hodgkin's lymphoma. Babalikan natin sa mga B cell yung chronic cell or chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Okay? It is actually uh, not classified under leukemias. Lymphoma actually ang ating CLL. No? Uh, medyo weird yung classification niya. So, pag-uusapan natin to. Kasi nadadiagnose siya not using the bone marrow aspirate. Anong ginagamit in CLL? Lymph node aspirate yan or LNA. So, ito yung kakaiba sa, ng leukemia. So, babalikan din natin si hairy cell, multiple myeloma or MM, and Burkitt's lymphoma. Recall natin anong type of ALL si Burkitt's lymphoma. It is type L3, which has large and homogeneous type. Okay, next tayo with CLL. CLL is the most common leukemia in elderly. Okay? Ano ulit ang most common cause of leukemia in, in children? Yung ALL naman, the counterpart of the CLL. Okay? And in other books, ang tawag dyan is small lymphocyte leukemia. Based on the name itself, makaka-appreciate ka ng small lymphocyte sa, mga, sa peripheral bloodstream mo. Ano ulit ang size or cell na ang basis the basis of the size of your RBC will be the size of RBCs. Ah, ano ang sabi ko? The basis of your lymphocyte cell will be the size of RBCs. Okay? Kapag magkasing size sila, ibig sabihin small lymphocyte. And then since chronic yan, one of the criteria should be the blast numbers should be less than 20%. And since chronic sila, ang affectation na age group is elderly. So, more than 50 years old. So, um, hindi to BMA, okay? It should be lymph node aspirate. Paki-correct na lang. In your lymph node aspirate, makikita mo yung mga etong karakteristik. Number one, soccer ball appearance. And then number two, your smudge cells or the basket cells, which is the patognomonic sign for your CLL. And may kita mo lang din to, aside from your aspirate, may kita mo rin to in your PBS. So, tingnan natin kung anong itsura ng soccer ball and smudge cells under micro. Sa, sa CLL, no, kung makikita nyo itong mga to, di ba mukhang mga soccer ball. So, kung ito drawing natin yan, di ba, parang mga, ano ba mag-drawing ng soccer ball? Anyway, mga alternating black and white ano appearance sila. Okay? And then for, uh, in PPS, may kita mo yung smudge cell or the basket cell. So, mukha silang basket, right? Ito yung kunwari yung basket. So, kamukha niya halos. Nagkakaroon ng smudge cell kasi mga lymphocyte uh, in CLL are very weak. No? Madali silang masira during staining uh, methods. So, during ano, right staining, nadidisintegrate sila agad-agad. So, ito yung tinatawag natin smudge. Na smudge na lymphocyte. Next is the hairy cell leukemia. Dahil sa patognomonic sign niya na hairy cells. This is actually small B lymphocytes na may mga um, cytoplasmic projections na mukhang mga hair-like structures. So, kung yung drawing natin yan, no? So, yung B cell, so may mga projection from the cytoplasm. So, nagmumukhang hair sila, hairy balls. Ayan. And the special stain for this, para ma-appreciate mo yung ganitong structure, is the tartrate-resistant acid phosphatase, or tinatawag natin trap test. So, for mnemonics, no, trap the hairy monster. 
down. Nakuha ko lang to somewhere sa Har or somewhere in other book shula. Para mas madaling intindihin para saan ang trap sa hairy cell, sa, oh, hairy cell leukemia. So, under microscope, ito yung mga tinitawag natin yung mga cytoplasmic projections. Kaya siya tinawag na hairy cell. Okay? Next naman is the MM or the multiple myeloma. So, uh, sa mga books ngayon, ang pangalan niya is plasma cell myeloma na. Dahil ang main cause of the cancer is the uh, cancerous plasma cells. Okay? And uh, kaya tinawag natin cancer, nag overreacting yung plasma cell producing a lot of immunoglobulins or abnormal proteins. Okay? And these abnormal proteins can cause the following consequences. So, meron tayong uh, mnemonics na crab. Hypercalcemia. Nagkakaroon ng hypercalcemia kasi yung mga antibodies or immunoglobulins, ang target niya are your bones. Okay? Releasing a lot of calcium. Pag nadurog yung bones, yung mga calcium deposit niya pupunta ngayon sa bloodstream. Kaya, kaya merong hypercalcemia. And this hypercalcemia can also cause renal failure. So, nagkakaroon ng calcium stones. No? This, uh, nagkakaroon ngayon ng destruction of your nephrons. Another is anemia. Bakit nagkakaroon ng anemia? Again, your bones are capable for RBC production. No? Um, lalo na lang yung mga bone marrow natin. Okay? So, kung walang, kung nasisira ang mga bones natin, nasisira din yung production of your RBC. Kaya may anemia. And aside from that, ang another cause niya is the destruction of your nephrons due to your kidney failure. Okay? Sa renal failure. So, wala kang erythropoietin. Kaya mag magkakaroon ka ng uh, anemia. And, ayun nga, dahil nga mayroon tayong bone destruction, may kita mo yan actually in X-ray. Okay? Ang i-check mo ngayon, yung mga axial skeleton. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng axial skeleton? Titinan mo yung skull, okay? pati yung vertebra. And also the hips. Vertebra. And yung hip bone. So, yung mga gitnang part of the body or yung tinatang ng axial skeleton. Anong itsura ng mga uh, multiple myeloma under micro, uh, x-ray. So, sa x-ray, ma-appreciate mo to, mga na, parang na-puncture, no, mga bilog-bilog yan. Actually, ito rin. Ito rin. Ito rin. So, tinatawag natin punch out lesions. O, parang na-puncture. No, perfect circle sila. Okay, proceed tayo with Burkitt's lymphoma. The characteristic na makikita natin under microscope is the starry sky uh, pattern. Mamaya, papakita ko sa inyo ano ibig sabihin ng starry sky. Or, drawing lang natin. Okay? So, ang starry sky na yan, uh, merong drawing natin mabuti. Okay. So, yung ating ano, background is dark blue, actually. Tapos, yung mga lymphocyte ay may mga makakapal na um, makakapal na cytoplasm. Okay? So, nagmumuka silang mga stars. Nikita nyo ba? <laughs> actually, sorry sa drawing ko. Mamaya, papakita ko naman yung actual microscopic appearance. So, ito yung itsura ng starry sky appearance. Yung ating mga lymphocyte has a lot of glycolipids, no? So, mas maraming mas maraming cytoplasmic content na walang kulay. So, ito yung nagkakos ng star-like star structure. Anyway, proceed tayo with the classification of your Burkitt's. We have three types. We have endemic, sporadic, and immunodeficiency associated. Sa endemic, pambata yan. No? 4 to 7 years old, 
So akala kasi nila, no, nakakahawa yung sickness nito kasi halos lahat no, uh, bata yung yung primary patients. And the primary ma manifestation is jawbone jaw mass or mandib mandibular mass. So sporadic naman, both children and young adults. Ang difference naman dito, ang manifestation is merong bukol sa chan or abdominal mass. Okay? Sa immunodeficiency associated, Burkitt's lymphoma siya na na-form sa mga may mga HIV. Okay? Ito yung type ng Burkitt's lymphoma na very fatal. Actually, Burkitt's lymphoma is treatable, except this type. Dahil marami siyang affectation, pwede siyang pumunta sa brain or CNS, central nervous system, your bone marrow, peripheral blood, and associated din siya with your EBV infection. So, prone kang magkaroon ng kissing disease. So, ito nga yung sinatawag kong starry sky appearance. Kung makikita nyo itong mga to, this is actually your lymphocyte na madami yung kanyang cytoplasmic content. Yung cytoplasm niya has a lot of lipids. And again, lipids are stain, stain, uh, re, parang stain resistant. So, hindi na, walang kulay yung kanyang uh, cytoplasm. Okay, next naman, ginawa po ko itong dalawang ito dahil uh, uh, parehas silang uh, affected, ina-affect yung mga T-cells natin. Okay? Mycosis, mycosis fungoides from the name itself, no? Fungoid. Akala ni dati, fungoid, fungal infection yan. Kasi mukha silang mga ringworm pagdating sa skin. Pero under microscope, wala sin walang nag-grow. Or under culture, walang nag-grow na fungi. So instead of fungi, ang problema pala nila is bagsak yung T-cells nila causing your lympho uh, cut cutaneous lymphoma. Cutaneous siya kasi at the skin level lang. Okay? So sa skin biopsy, ma-appreciate mo yung potrier microabscesses. These are, ito, kunwari, ito yung skin. May mga maliit na mga abscess yan. Sa Cesare syndrome naman, kapag ang MF mo or the mycosis fungoides kumalat na all over your body or nagiging systemic, ang tawag na doon is your Cesare syndrome. So, ito yung difference nilang dalawa. Ito, skin level lang. Cesare syndrome will involve your lymph nodes na din. So, may mga kulani ka na rin. No? And under microscope, makikita mo yung mga Cesare cells. These are actually uh, lymphocyte. Di ba ang lymphocyte natin? Ganito ang itsura. Okay? Uh, uh, big eccentric uh, nucleus. No? Very circular nucleus. Sa so, Cesare syndrome, Mukhang brain-like structure. So, paano ba ang brain? O, parang ganyan. And may mga convolutions. So, may, uh, pakita natin ang itsura nila under microscope. So, this is my mycosis fungoides. Ano ang patognomonic sign na mycosis fungoides? These are your potrier microabscesses. And again, mycosis fungoides are uh, affects only at the skin level. While your Cesare syndrome has the presence of the Cesare cells, mukha daw may mga brain convolutions, no? Mukhang brain matter. And ma-affect ma nga yung skin plus the lymph node. Okay, next group of lymphomas are your Hodgkin's lymphoma affects both of your T and B cell. In WHO classification, we have two types. Meron tayong nodular Hodgkin's and classical Hodgkin's. Ito ngayon yung bagong name ng lymphocyte predominant. No? Hindi na ginagamit madalas ito. 
nodular Hodgkin's na. Kaya mag, wag magpapalit to. Okay? Nodular Hodgkin's is different from your nodular sclerosis. Nodular sclerosis is under classic Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay? You have to take note of that. So, Hodgkin's lymphoma is associated with this following context clues. Ito yung mga hahanapin nyo sa questionnaire ninyo. Pag nakita nyo na yan, for sure, Hodgkin's lymphoma ang case study ninyo. So, unahin natin the popcorn cells. Popcorn cells are actually lymphocytes na may multilobulated nuclei. And actually, hindi sila, wala silang masyadong stain. It appears as white. Kaya, tinawag na popcorn. No? Multilobulated na, kulay white pa. Okay? And then, actually, Hodgkin's then is associated with EBV infection. So, we have two types of lymphoma associated with EBV. We have Burkitt's. Anong type of Burkitt's ang associated with EBV? Yung ating immunodeficiency type. And your Hodgkin's lymphoma. Next is yung Reed-Sternberg naman. Reed-Sternberg cell has two nuclei with eosinophilic nucle uh, color. Ano ibig sabihin ng eosinophilic? Orange to red in color. So, the drawing natin yan, no, mukha silang may mga dalawang mata. Okay? And very orange or very reddish yung kanilang nuclei. Instead of uh, blue color, di ba ang normal lymphocyte natin, blue yung kanilang nucleus. Sa so, Ritz-Sternberg, red to orange. So, tingnan natin yan under microscope. So, ito yung popcorn cell na sinasabi ko. Diba mukha silang popcorn, kulay white nga sila and multilobulated. Madaming folds. Kung, uh, kung convinced kayo, okay? While yung red Sternberg naman, kung ma yan, dalawang nucleus with red to orange nuclei. Okay? So, hindi siya, unlike itong mga to, dapat ganito yung, dapat ang nucleus color ng nucleus niya. Dark, violet to blue color. But instead, no, naging reddish to purplish in color sila. Okay, balik tayo dito. Kung uh, isa to sa mga gagawan nyo ng Manila paper, no, pagdating sa board exam, yung table na to. What are the differences between the types of Hodgkin's lymphoma? Again, the lymphocyte predominant is also known as your nodular Hodgkin's lymphoma. So, iba yan sa nodular sclerosis. Okay, the difference will be this uh, criteria. Sa EBV infection, pinaka madalas dyan yung lymphocyte depleted type. While yung lowest, yung nodular sclerosis. Wala namang association with EBV ang lymphocyte predominant. Okay? So, yan yung mga i-highlight natin. Sa RS cells naman, ano ibig sabihin ng RS? Reed Sternberg. Lahat present except your lymphocyte predominant. Sa popcorn cells naman, lahat walang popcorn cells except your lymphocyte predominant. Okay, CD markings naman. CD20 and 21 is associated with lymphocyte predominant only. Lahat negative. Ang CD1530 naman, lahat present except your lymphocyte predominant again. Pagdating sa survival rate, the best prognosis, anong type of lymphoma ka mas mabubuhay, kumbaga, no? Yung lymphocyte predominant type. And yung worst naman is the lymphocyte depleted type. Dito ka mas madalas mamatay. Sa frequency naman, most common sa uh, population is the nodular sclerosis. Okay? So, tandaan natin yung mga tag dito, mga exception to the rule. No? Kung kung nakalimot na kayo, 
uh, sa mga goals na to, the bobo, <laughs> the bobo choice is always the lymphocyte predominant kasi halos lahat na fulfill niya. Those are my exception. Kung nakalimot lang, okay? Pero best pa rin na intindihin niyo lahat ng uh, info dito. And that's it. Ito na ang final slide ko. Pwede niyo aralin ulit kung may na-miss kayo na mga blocks sa inyong handout. Pwede niyo balikan yung completed version. Aralin niyo muna bago kayo mag-homework. Ipapublish ko na right now.